Hello and welcome back. Today I want to share with you a very neat mathematical concept uh, that can be very powerful in computer graphics. It's called a simplicial complex representation. Now, just to get the theory out of the way, a simplicial complex is a set where every element is a uh, simplex. So for example, uh, a point is a zero simplex, a line is a one simplex, a triangle is a two simplex, a tetrahedron, and you're going to have, let me try to do this well, but I've never been much of an artist, and a tetrahedron is um, a three simplex, and so on and so on and so on in higher dimensions, and don't ask me to draw the other dimensions. Now, this essentially means that when you're working with triangular meshes, you're actually working with simplicial meshes. So you have been working with simplicial complexes this whole time and never knew about it. Now, to give you an example of how this works, let's say that we have the following mesh. It's just two triangles that share an edge. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, like that. Yes, perfect. Now, I am going to label every vertex first, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to label every edge 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And finally, I'm going to label both faces 0 and 1. Now, we're going to represent these using a matrix the following way. The columns are going to be the vertices and the rows are going to be the edges. We're going to call these A0 and as I said, the vertices, so one, two, three, and now the edges, zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, now vertex, uh, sorry, edge zero is going to have vertices zero and one, so zero and one. Now edge one is going to have one and two, so one and two. Edge 2 is going to have 3 and 2, so 3 and 2. Edge 3 is going to have 3 and 0. And finally, Edge 4 is going to have 0 and 2, so 0 and 2. Now, something that is uh, going to be neat is every row is going to, be, is going to have exactly two non-zero entries. The reason for that is because every edge has only two vertices, then it follows that the representation of that edge on the matrix should only have two non-zero entries, one for each one of the vertices that it contains. So these matrices end up being really, really sparse. Now I am going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to do it with the faces. We're going to call that one A1. And uh, now the columns are going to be the edges and the rows are going to be the faces. So rows, 0 and 1, 1 for each face, and columns, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? And base 0 has the edges 2, 3, and 4. So 2, 3, and 4. And the other face, phase 1, has 4, 0, and 1. So 4, 0, and 1. And similar as before, now we have 3 non-zero entries um, per row, one for each one of the edges that compose a triangle. And then if we went onto the tetrahedron, then it would be four because every tetrahedron has four faces, so on and so on and so on. Now, okay, um, sorry, a small correction. Uh, there was supposed to be a one in here. Uh, I didn't notice, like, look at this edge. Like there's totally supposed to be a one there and I just missed it. So on any case, now, why do we want to do this representation? Why do we care? Well, consider the following. Let's define a column vector V and let's put a, that is going to represent our vertices. And we're going to label the first vertex as one and the others as zeros, like this. Okay. And this is a four by one and this is a five by four. So you can do a zero times v, this is mathematically valid, and well, why do you want to do this? Let's compute it. In linear algebra, you usually do, or like you always do, 
rows dot columns so it's this row dot the column so this dot the column is going to be one this dot the column is going to be zero this dot the column is going to be zero this is going to be one and one so notice something we started with one vertex uh, we started with four vertices right like one two three four and now this one has five numbers why did the four turn into five and moreover there was a one one in here and now there's three what is the logic behind all this well notice something right like this this is that column and this column is describing what the connectivity information of the edges and the vertices is so this is essentially telling us that edge zero contains one see it's the same and that means that if you look at this diagram if you put a one in this and then you compute this kind of operation you are going to get the edges that are connected to zero to, to that vert and now for you to notice that this is not just a specific example or whatnot i'm going to do it again now instead of labeling the first one as zero i'm going to do the second one and now if this is correct if what i'm claiming is correct then what's going to happen is i am going to get the edges that are connected to, to the second vertex as ones in in this vector and now so that means uh, that I should be getting edges 0 and 1 marked as 1. So these two. Well, let's see. This dot that is going to be 1. And then this dot that is also going to be 1. And then this dot that is going to be 0. This dot that is going to be 0. And the final one dot that is going to be 0. And you can pause the video right here. You can check that my math is sound and that I haven't cheated. Uh, but as you can see, you actually get the result that I claim you're going to get. So in just one product, like look how, how short this is. Like picture this not in terms of math, but in terms of code. This is one product. Like if you were to write this in C++, it would essentially be a dot V, right? Like return a dot V or whatever. It's extremely short to write. But it gives you so much information right off the bat. And if you couple these with sparse data structures, like sparse vectors and sparse matrices, then it's going to be fast. And you're going to get, for example, the indices of all the non-zero entries in one operation as well. So this gives you a lot of power in, in a very expressive way. You don't have to think about things too much. You don't have to like go through all of the hardest process of like manually inspecting your mesh and so on. You do this one product and you get it right off the bat for free. It's amazing, well, I say for free, like obviously like you're still going to pay execution time uh, to like do the algebraic operations and whatnot. But if you're doing sparse matrices, uh, the asymptotic complexity should be very close to what you would regularly get. But it's very, very cool. It's very powerful. Um, and I actually do have this representation coded in Never Engine. Um, I don't want to tell you where because it's not very clean. And, uh, you know, like I want to improve it a little bit uh, before telling you where it is. But yeah, like it's super, super neat. Um, now, um, like for those of you that may have learned uh, about this, like I hope uh, that you found it interesting. If you already knew about this, uh, please let me know if you think uh, that I, whether I explained it well or not, or if I had some mistakes. Uh, and yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. And you know, like YouTubers always ask you to like and subscribe to their videos, but I'm not going to do that. So bye bye.